We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, this is Wojtek Stramski. I am honored uh, to be speaking to you today as the CEO of Beyond PL. I represent one of the most sustainable data centers in all of Central Europe, and I will be uh, walking you through how green data center services can help us drive sustainability uh, today. So we are very, very lucky. We are living in very good times. Apart from COVID, we are actually living in very exciting times. The technological transformation is undergoing an extremely rapid pace of change. And we are a witness of that today. The key drivers of digital transformation are technological advancement with the introduction of technologies like IoT, AI, blockchain, machine learning, and 5G. And this is all leading concurrently to a growing population of internet users. Uh, only 4.6 billion of the world's population uses the internet today. That is expected to grow to two thirds of the global population by 2023. And that is still not enough. We need to do more to ensure that the greater uh, population is actually included in this digital transformation. And for this to happen, we need to have and ensure that the entire global population can benefit from technology. We need to deploy more data centers, including edge facilities. And this is actually very, very important. Estimates point that thousands, if not tens of thousands of edge facilities located physically close to the end user will need to be deployed to ensure that artificial intelligence, machine learning, real-time decisions are pushed to the users of the internet where they are. And living in these times also means we need to take responsibility that comes from the decisions we make today and the impact of these on future generations to come. The global data center electricity demand today makes up about 1% of the global total electricity demand. It is estimated that between 200 and 250 terawatt hours of electricity are drawn by the data center industry. And actually another 100 terawatt hours by crypto. In only 10 years, and this is actually very important, this is expected to grow anywhere from four to 20 times when global electricity demand will be about three to 11% taken up by the data center industry. And who knows how much more crypto will actually take then. And so when we're going through this digital transformation, we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is the cloud? And how do we want the cloud to be in the future? Is it going to be just another cloud of CO2 in the atmosphere? Or is it going to be something that is actually going to be beneficial to us? And when we are deploying this digital infrastructure, we need to ask ourselves the, the question, how do we measure and ensure the energy efficiency of that infrastructure? And just like we deployed um, measurements and tools to measure other industries, we must introduce transparent and 
default standards for the data center industry. And the good news is we actually already do have this measure. It is called PUE. And so what is PUE? PUE or power usage efficiency is actually a simple metric used to measure the ratio of total gross power drawn by a data center to power the IT infrastructure co-located in that in data center. And for a very easy and simple illustration example, if servers and storage equipment require 100 kilowatts to be powered, then the question is how much additional energy is required to power the supporting infrastructure of that data center, the cooling equipment, the lighting, the generators, the UPSs, the security infrastructure. And in this very simple example, if 100 kilowatts is drawn by servers and storage and another 50 kilowatts to power the supporting infrastructure, the data center in this example has a PUE of 1.5. And so the lower the PUE ratio, the more energy efficient the data center, because the more energy goes to pull uh, power the servers and the storage equipment co-located in that facility. And so measuring PUE actually makes a lot of sense from an environmental perspective. If you take a customer that has a requirement of 10 megawatt hours, that customer can save 25,000 tons of COT per year just by drawing from the PUE ratio of 1.1 versus a PUE ratio of 1.5. PUE also makes sense from a business perspective. A customer that requires one megawatt of IT load can save 600,000 euros per year, assuming an energy price of 20 euro cents per kilowatt hour, which is actually quite low when you look at where we are today on the global map of energy prices, just by drawing from a data center that has a PUE of 1.1 versus one that has a 1.5. And PUE is actually something that is very much worth fighting for total worldwide carbon emissions make up about 1% 1 uh, 1 in terms of data center uh, worldwide carbon emissions contribution, 350 million tons of CO2 per year today. That is expected to grow to 1.1 billion tons of CO2 emissions in 2025, and actually 6 billion tons of CO2 by 2040. When you think about it, the data center industry is actually going tremendous, tremendous development and is one of the few industries, if not the industry, experiencing the greatest growth of demand in energy take up and CO2 emissions in the next 20 years. And so ensuring that the industry can decrease from the levels of PUE 1.5 to 1.1 can help us save anywhere from two to three billion tons of CO2 emissions per year. That is huge. And we really have to stand up and fight for this. The good news is the work on driving sustainability in the sector has already started. The European Commission appreciates the requirement to digitize all aspects of the uh, economy. However, it is keen that the transformation that is happening will not endanger to overarching goal of reaching climate neutrality. And the data center industry has actually come together. Big global players and small players, local players have actually entered into a pact where the data center members have pledged to become climate neutral by 2030. And this will help the EU meet its goal of becoming climate neutral by 2050. And the good news is that sustainable solutions are actually possible and they're actually possible in the least expected of places. 
Poland, which is not known all, on the global map to be the front runner in green energy and applying green solutions, having a mix, a power mix of 80% coal today, 20% renewable, we can actually be very proud in Poland to have deployed one of the best energy efficiency standards for data center infrastructure in all of Europe. We have a functioning data center that has a PV of 1.2 versus the norm on the geographical latitude of 1.4 to 1.6. And how have we done this as beyond? We are today an eight and a half megawatt campus located in the city of Poznań, Poland. We have commissioned the infrastructure in 2016. We are actually one of the three data centers, only three data centers in the entire European Union to have the best rating in terms of rated for certification from the agency on CTA 942, which allows us to deliver services at the best quality of security. So there's only three such facilities in all of Europe. And concurrently, the infrastructure is powered 100% by green energy. And it's actually delivering a PUE of 1.2 versus the norm of 1.4 to 1.6. And how we have done this is we've actually invested upfront significant funds to make sure that the, uh, the infrastructure is sustainable. We've introduced technologies like adiabatic cooling technology, which helps decrease the amount of energy we draw to cool the servers that are physically co-located in our facility. We also recycle the heat that is generated by the servers in the chambers, data center chambers, to heat the office facilities, the logistics buildings. We've rolled out a data center management system to manage energy efficiency. And we've actually deployed E24 Cloud, which is the first Polish cloud solution on the market, which allows our customers to better leverage the assets that are co-located here. And probably something that we're most proud of the last two years, we've actually pushed our vendors and procured best-in-class servers and storage equipment that is also energy efficient. So not only do we require less energy to power the uh, uh, data center infrastructure, we also require less energy to actually power the servers and the storage equipment themselves. And today we are working on an expansion project to grow this campus to 42 megawatts. And alongside the expansion project, we are working alongside the stakeholders to ensure that this significant heat that will be generated in the data center will not be lost, will be recycled to the residential and commercial real estate surrounding the facility to heat, provide heating of water and heating of uh, 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 facilities during the, the, the winter period. Another consideration to take is, um, can we actually push digital transformation to be deployed in an Airbnb type of model? If you look at the success of the Ubers, Airbnb, and we work all of these technologies were deployed under the foundation that these asset classes like cars, apartments, hotels, office buildings were not utilized to the best of their capacity. And so you need to think, how can we do the same in IT? Today, there are millions of data centers which are deployed and owned adjacent to factories, within office buildings. And we just have to, as a society, come together and understand that this is not an efficient model. There is no way that these facilities have PUE standards below 1.2, because it just doesn't make sense to make these investments. And so we need to go to these off-premise data centers where the uh, mass of the customers or the users in these off-premise data centers can actually leverage the 
purchasing power of these customers and allow us to deploy these energy efficient solutions. Another thing to think about is actually what we are witnessing now with the cloud transformation. It's, it's allowing us to transition from a buy to own model versus a service model around leveraging access to servers and storage equipment. Today, the majority of servers and storage equipment in a buy to own model are utilized at 25 to 30, maybe 35 percent uh, uh, capacity. So that there's ample room to leverage off of that. And that's why you're seeing this transition into, into cloud. Another consideration for the industry is how can we push digital transformation in a circular economy type of a model? I mentioned what we are doing here with beyond working together with the uh, stakeholders, where the 42 megawatts that will be used to cool the data center infrastructure, the servers, the heat generated by these servers in turn will be used to heat the residential and commercial facilities that are located adjacent to the facility. Can we actually push, and this is something very important as well, can we actually push for more recycling in the economy? All the servers that we are building and rolling out today, all the storage equipment is actually a huge contributor to the minerals and mining space where we need to mine uh, uh, the Earth's resources to, to continue to build these. We need to recycle the existing infrastructure and recoup and recover the minerals to minimize the footprint on the mining side. So just to conclude here with a call to action, we all have a role to play to ensure that digital transformation is carried out in a sustainable way. To data center operators and vendors, we need to be transparent and we need to deploy sustainable solutions. We should fo stop focusing on short-term gains and look at the big picture and push innovations in this space to deliver climate neutrality. Consumers and end customers need to be positioned to make informed purchase decisions. They need to be made aware of their carbon footprint and in turn be demanding of solution providers to deploy solutions in the most sustainable way. To the government and regulator representatives, we need to drive legislation in the industry to force sustainability. And we need to encourage consumers and clients of the industry to purchase sustainable. And for banks and financial institutions, it's actually pretty easy. We just need to stop providing financing and capital to projects which cannot demonstrate, demonstrate sustainability. And last but not least, digital transformation is not possible without all the innovators globally taking part in this transformation. And the innovators as the drivers of this digital transformation they need to make sure that when they are choosing the solution, how it will be rolled out, where it will be hosted, that they do this with sustainability in the back of their mind. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Is it working? Yeah. So f thank you very much. Um, I have a question about, um, like, can you explain more, like, in more detailed way, what is the important um, action or actions to, to achieve PUE below 1.2? Because you, you, you mentioned some ways, but uh, if it's possible to explain like, in, in more detailed way, uh, what are the actions? Sure. I think, I think you have to look at it from you have to start when you actually design the data center. Uh, that's the place where you start. And you have to envision where you want this data center to be. And you have to think about where you are in the geographical coordinates on the global map. If you are deploying a data center in a desert, you will need more energy 
to cool the infrastructure during the day and potentially less during the night when it gets cold. Similarly, if you are in the north in the Scandinavian markets, you may utilize the natural resources that are available to you to provide the cooling. One of the biggest issues in, in, in a data center is to ensure that the temperature in the chambers in the server rooms is maintained at an optimal level to ensure that the servers continue to run. And so you have to minimize the overheating. And then there are multiple solutions that you can deploy uh, from introducing, obviously, the source of the energy into the data center, whether it is green or not green, that's one. But even if it is green 100% and your PUE is at 1.5 or 1.6, that is not efficient. So then you have to think, okay, what's available to you in terms of the natural uh, resources that you have available? We as Beyond um, deployed adiabatic cooling. Adiabatic cooling is actually nothing more than utilizing the circulation of air, the natural circulation of air to provide cooling to the data chambers. And so when we provide this natural uh, uh, enabler, we use less energy to draw on the data center in, uh, to, to actually power the cooling equipment. We don't need as much air conditioning to cool the equipment. The other element is the, the, what I mentioned is this heat that is being generated in these chambers. So when you think about you know, hundreds of servers running in a, in a room, it really gets warm here. And so if you can actually utilize the heat somehow, and we use that heat in other areas of the facility, so recycle that heat. I mentioned to you the, the campus, we have another data center, which is located in the city of Poznań. In the city center, it's in a shopping center. It's a one megawatt facility. It's a small, small edge facility. And actually that's the future of the world. More edge facilities will come. We deploy the heat that is generated by the data center to warm the shopping center, the stores, the, the common area. So they use less energy um, to, 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 to heat the facilities. So if you think about what you can do to uh, utilize the natural resources that are available to you, whether you know it's all this interesting technologies coming up, the pumps, the air to air cooling, uh, groundwater to, to air different pumps cooling, um, deploying, deploy, deploying heat, reusing, recycling that heat in the infrastructure, that all will drive down the footprint uh, of the data center itself. I don't know if that answered the question. Uh, I have a question about the number you mentioned during your presentation. You said that in 2040, uh, data centers will be responsible for, I think, 14% of global electricity consumption. Is that correct? 14% uh, of... Uh, 14? Uh, yes, yes. 14% uh, okay. actually of emissions. Of emissions. Of, uh, oh, okay, of emissions. And, and I guess that emissions will go up year by year until 2040. So... This is correct, yes. Okay, so, uh, and I guess because of the efficiencies you're trying to achieve uh, will be slower like the increase will be slower than it is, but it's still not enough, right? So it is still, so I guess, because you say, uh, you talk a lot about, from your perspective, obviously, that 1.1 of PUE is a very good result, but maybe, and I don't know if the industry looks it uh, looks in it in this way, maybe we need also to look at the data you are processing in the data centers maybe yeah. there should be something that should encourage encourage your users to you know to use less data less space less carbon emissions yes i i 100 i agree <laughs> and this comes down to i think um making the users actually aware of the co2 emissions if you introduce a, a standard way to actually measure the emissions uh, if you are a user of Facebook or Netflix or whatever it is you are actually a user of, do you know how much CO2 you are um, contributing to as, as an individual? So I think this comes down to first making sure there is a standard which is actually deployed and measured by the industry. Okay, making then the consumers and the customers aware. So whether it's a company or whether it's an end user, an individual 
so that they understand how much they are contributing to that carbon footprint. And I, I completely 100% agree with you. Um, getting to 1.0 in terms of the data center industry is probably not enough uh, because like you said, uh, the CO2 emissions will continue to grow uh, at, at an alarming rate. I think that the, the other side of the equation is how much benefit are we providing to society by deploying digital solutions? So if you uh, look at e-learning, if you look at medicine, if you look at um, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, if you look at financial industry, if you look at um, uh, developing countries and providing users access to mobile and, and giving, giving them access to the internet and to many, many solutions which were not available to them, you know, you, you kind of have to take the view that you are probably making their life better. So that digital transformation is not something we're going to go away from. That increase in, in um, CO2 emissions is probably not something we are going to go away from unless we um, define the standards of what we require of the industry. And I think what we can do more to minimize and going back to your question is to make people aware of that, um, uh, what solution they are using how much they are contributing individually as a, as, a, as a collective, as a society to CO2 emissions, just like we are by measuring uh, fuel emissions in cars and airlines and uh, every other industry that, uh, that is being measured. I think I see a question from uh, Watagi. Um, um, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I, I wanted to ask um, if you would consider a uh, green you know, processing, a concept of um, smart cities, because they are encroaching um, everywhere. So like, should this be something that that specific um, industry consider uh, uh, when coming up with this uh, smart city hubs? And, um, and, uh, and how do they ensure that they reduce and at the same time, uh, ensure that the security measures are, are in place because it's the, most the, the biggest problem with like the EU I, I saw uh, there are so many security measures are required to be in place especially in light of like, regulations like the GDPR so um so how, how, how do you think um, how this concept would apply in uh, also like the privacy side and smart cities yeah so I think um I think that's a very good question. I think this comes back to, to the concept of where we are today. If you look at the map of data centers, the majority of the data center infrastructure, the large infrastructure today that's been built out is actually regional data centers. Now, from these regional data centers, you cannot actually deploy efficient smart city solutions. So if you think of an emergency response system, you need data centers in the particular city, in the specific city so that the decisions and the AI and all the algorithms that are working to, to power that emergency response system are being taken in real time. They cannot have and be, be, be affected by a latency gap. So if you think from a macro perspective, deploying smart city concepts will require the majority of these cities to have uh, edge data center infrastructure. Now, if this edge data center infrastructure, knowing that you have to deploy this edge data uh, infrastructure, you need to ensure that this is done. This investment is carried out to ensure sustainability. Okay, so you cannot be deploying data centers or you cannot allow for, for um, whoever's rolling it out, whether it's the private sector or the public sector to roll out data centers, which are not efficient. It's a bigger upfront investment. It takes a lot of thinking to do in terms of how you design the infrastructure again depending on where you are on the on, on the map of the global map um, but uh, you you need to do this you, you need to do this and I think in terms of security and access obviously this is another important component you know how will this edge data center facility look like um, uh, one one item is physical access and securing uh, uh, or limiting physical access the other element is, is obviously the cybersecurity element, which uh, we see today is, is becoming more and more important. Uh, and all that, you know, even cybersecurity, that's a consumer of energy as well in the data center somewhere. These solutions consume energy. So um, uh, 
edge data center infrastructure will be critical to support smart city deployments. And we need to make sure that that edge data center um, uh, infrastructure is sustainable. And if you are taking business decisions around this infrastructure today, you have to think 10 year, 15 year horizon. So we're in 2020 today, whatever infrastructure you are putting up today is gonna to be there for 10 or the next 15 years. And so you need to take that decision today to make sure that it is at the best PUE levels possible. I don't know if that answered the question. Uh, yes, thank you very much, yes. Uh, I see a question from uh, Jonathan Yi. Which regions will have the most growth in internet users and which re regions will see the most energy use increase for data centers? I think uh, uh, I see there's a time limit for the question. I will just answer this last question. I think you see this uh, growth uh, in internet users in, in African uh, nations, in South America, in Asia, where actually access to the internet is being um, deployed or provided via access to mobile networks. And so the biggest growth uh, is in these regions. And obviously there, you will see the largest drive of uh, increase of data center energy use. And um, I think just to, just to conclude, I think one important thing that we have to uh, view that we have to take as a global society is you know, countries which are not uh, the front runners of, of, of green and digital transformation uh, you know, allocating data centers into these countries and these regions where, where uh, the country is not predominantly green will obviously not help um, uh, help drive uh, sustainable transformation in the digital space. So if you look at Asia, uh, East Asia, uh, big consumers of, of coal, um, the growth of internet users in these countries, um, and obviously um, data centers that um, will predominantly be using coal energy to power themselves. That's, I think, the biggest, biggest risk we have. So thank you very much. Uh, I, see, I hope, don't know if there's any other questions. <laughs> Probably an interesting topic we could speak uh, quite long about. Hi, uh, I'm Sudhir Parazuli. Uh, in your presentation, like you mainly concentrated on on uh, incre increasing the power efficiency by uh, lowering the PUE, uh, so uh, you em emphasize on lowering the power consumption as well. Um, have you ever planned or thought of uh, using captive uh, uh, clean uh, clean fuel generators, uh, such as fuel cells and all, and uh, use the use the cooling efficiency generated by the fuel cell heat uh, uh, because there are lots of industries have uh, started using clean fuel generators, captive generators in their um, uh, on, uh, premises. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that question. I think yes. So I think this is this is the call to action up on the last slide, uh, bringing innovation to the data center space. And uh, uh, I definitely uh, am a firm believer that. Um, we just need to do more as, 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 a, as an industry. Uh, and there are technologies that we are watching. I think uh, for beyond specifically, I think uh, uh, today we're still a relatively small uh, uh, data center in terms of the eight megawatts, but going to 42, um, that is something we are definitely looking at right now in terms of what other technologies are available to us to ensure that uh, um, that, that we can uh, be self self sustaining and, and, and green. We are one hundred percent green already. I would I would push this type of uh, solutions as as you mentioned to uh, geographical locations again where uh, deploying green data centers is not is not possible and and to have them look into these kinds of solutions. But definitely, I think we we are in the very, very early uh, stages of um, uh, transforming this industry and, and we need to transform. Okay, so if there are no other uh, questions. Um, I have additional question sure. um, about uh, how, how can you use uh, AI solutions and some kind of algorithms to 
lower the usage of energy in terms of efficiency of, of some processes and also uh, potentially in terms of gener uh, energy usage. Uh, so energy generation and how, how efficient is the process of uh, analyzing the data. Sure. So, so what, what, what do you think about uh, like AI in, in this field and, and how can, what, what can be the role of AI? Yeah, I think, Thank you. I think there's actually, thanks, that's a good question. So I think in, in the data center industry uh, in particular, there's actually quite a lot of um, players who are deploying AI solutions to help you monitor energy efficiency. And this is uh, on, on two fronts. And I think one thing is, first of all, IoT um, is allowing you to actually measure the energy draw from, you know, on a particular equipment level. And then you can analyze the uh, power draw on a particular equipment level, uh, individual equipment level. And obviously then you can run your AI algorithms to identify trends when this power draw is increasing and what is leading to that. Is it something that is happening internally in the data center? Is it um, outside, uh, you know, the temperature getting warm or the summer coming and you're just drawing more energy to, to, to cool the infrastructure, but also on an individual, um, you know, server rack level, uh, that is also possible now. So we, we actually have a, um, a DC data center management system, which is allowing us to analyze data uh, power draw on a rack by rack level. Now, obviously where these racks are physically placed in a chamber, uh, how close to the cooling equipment, are they optimally placed? If you have two, three racks that are very energy, um, uh, 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 big energy consumers, and then 20 racks, which are not energy consumers. Do you have, you know, the data, uh, the flow of air in the uh, in the chamber optimized for that? So it's about providing you a lot of information on a very, very uh, uh, pinpoint, granular level um, to optimize floor planning, layout, uh, air circulation, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's quite a lot of interesting solutions already made available. In the industry, um, we we do use some solutions, uh, and then AI. Obviously, the more data you you gather, um, uh, the, the the better you are at predicting the future and driving driving your uh, hopefully future investment decisions. Right. So, obviously, we know the data center space is is growing. More chambers will be coming online. Maybe we will then need to use this data, and I hope we do uh, use this data to better design the facility of the future. Okay, I see the moderator is asking us to close. I'll, I'll be happy to take any questions if uh, there's, there's an email um, uh, on the presentation as well. So if there's any questions, I'm, I'll be very happy to connect and, and have chats. This is something very passionate about. So uh, hopefully we can do more together uh, as society, as uh, different stakeholders and different uh, roles that we play to ensure that this digital transformation uh, minimizes the, the carbon footprint uh, Thank you very much.